overlooking downtown Phoenix. From the Faith Talk Studios in the Camelback Towers, it's the Dustin Daniels Show, where God, sex, and current events are explored from a Christian perspective. Here's your host, Dustin Daniels. one 855 dustin That's one 855 538-7846. You can also drop me an email at DustinDanielsRadio.com. Follow me on Twitter at Purity Pastor. And if you're on the website, you can check out our new immersion dates for June, July, and August. Immersion is a two-day men's workshop for those struggling with sexual purity, sexual integrity issues. And this two-day event will literally immerse you in Scripture, in worship, and in community. And this could be a starting point to living a life of sexual integrity. Living a life away from pornography. Can you imagine not being a slave to pornography? Being free from that. This, This ultimately, you know, we talk about Romans 7 during the two-day event, and why do I keep doing the things that I don't want to do? Why do I keep doing those things, and why those things over there, those things that I want to do, why am I not doing those things? The Apostle Paul wrote that. So we address that, and we take you through a biblical process of what that looks like. June 17th and 18th, July 15th and 16th, and August 19th and 20th. To learn more information on the Immersion Workshop, you can go to DustinDanielsRadio.com. Well, today, on today's show, we are going to talk about the things in life that you're just not expecting. When the boss asks you to come into his office and he tells you that the company is downsizing and you're being laid off. Or when the doctor calls with test results And he asks that you come in as soon as possible. When your your precious 14-year-old daughter comes home and she tells you that she's pregnant. Or maybe when your wife finds pornography on your computer. And she finds that you've been looking at this stuff for years and years and years. And, And whether these... These things are self-inflicted or not. Life is all about the unexpected, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's how are we going to respond when, not if, but when these things start happening in your life. Well, today, my guest is Jeff Kemp, and Jeff's story includes an amazing journey in the face of long odds during an 11-year career in the NFL. He was a successful backup and starting quarterback for the Rams, 49ers, Seahawks, and the Eagles. Jeff and his father, Jack Kemp, were the first father-son NFL quarterbacks in history. And Jeff is dedicated now to strengthening families and strengthening teams. He is passionate about marriages, families, and children. Jeff, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks, Dustin. It's great to be with you, and thanks for everything that you do. Hey, thank you, sir. We are uh, we're excited to have you on. You have written a book, and it's called Facing the Blitz. Give us a, a overview of of the book and what is a blitz for those of us who are not uh, too familiar with football. Well, Facing the Blitz is a football title. Um, blitzes are the, the dangerous moments in the game when the defense throws a whole bunch of people at the offense, more than they can block. Quarterback's likely to get hit, end up on his back. Uh, but the blitz is also uh, a great moment of opportunity because the defense can't cover as many receivers down the field. Um, and the opportunity for man-to-man coverage and perhaps a big touchdown pass sometimes results in the greatest plays of the game, even though maybe the quarterback ended up on his back. Um, <laughs> right. But it really depends yeah. upon being prepared for blitzes, responding to them, and coming together in teamwork and having players who kind of look out for one another, sacrifice for each other, change what they're doing, adapt, um, and uh, come together with a strategy that can seize opportunities, not just say, oh, no, they're coming to hit us. Um, and so that's the football analogy. The subtitle of the book is Three Strategies for Turning Trials into Triumphs, kind of like you turn a, a dangerous blitz into a touchdown. Um, our problems in life, which are coming not necessarily at times that we can predict, certainly, 
Um, but we know they're going to come. Jesus, in fact, said, in this world you're going to get blitz, but don't panic, I overcame the blitz. Uh, no, that's, <laughs> the, that's, that. the NFL, that's the NFL version. You must read the NIV or the American uh, Standard or something. I love that. Um, I, lo- I love that. That's John sixteen thirty three. Jesus says, in this world you're going to have trouble. Yeah. But do not panic, I have overcome the world. Um, Jesus has told us that the model in this fallen world with a rebellious Satan who has his influences uh, running around doing negative things, and uh, we humans have selfishness, which leads us to do negative things, and sometimes we initiate negative things in our own life, like you mentioned in your intro, and sometimes the negative things happen to us. Um, Certainly, you know, your company firing you or that... um, diagnosis at the doctor's office of cancer, a a drunk driver um, hitting someone you love in your family and either terribly injuring them or even killing them. Um, You know, we we, we can't stop bad things from happening, but we can have an attitude that responds to them well. We can deepen our faith in Jesus Christ and like him actually grow through obedience in our sorrows and our sufferings. And we actually can have our tough things our trials and our tribulations, our blitzes, we can have them turn into positives. Chuck Colson went to prison and it ended up leading him to Christ, and he started prison ministry. Johnny Erickson Tata broke her neck as a teenager and was uh, mad at God for two years until she had a, a, a new view of life and was mentored and encouraged. And Then she got a ministry to help people with disabilities, Johnny and friends. She became an artist. She became a speaker. She became a messenger of the gospel, that nothing should hold us back from celebrating the biggest gift, which is salvation. And uh, so bad can turn to good. You know, a broken marriage can get you back on track with Jesus. Um, A rescued marriage that recovers from an affair can end up starting a ministry that helps other marriages because it takes so much help to heal from that affair. So that's the perspective of this book, Facing the Blitz, Three Strategies for Turning Trials into Triumphs. I I love that, Jeff, and and I I couldn't agree more. I mean, my, my story is one of being an addict for 20 years of my life and wow. and 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 really wow. looking at my gosh without Jesus Christ I ran my life into this ditch over and over and over again and I kept running from everyone and everything my life obviously changes drastically when you meet Jesus he is the lover of our souls and and just like you said he takes all of this sin and rebellion and he 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 was actually teaching me what not to do <laughs> when I now minister to people who are doing the very same thing that that I did so it's amazing yeah. to me how God prepares us even he loves us so much that even when we rebel he's going to turn that for good if we're humble if we're repentant, if we're willing, if we have a an unbelievable desire, you're you're absolutely right. I I love your take on John sixteen thirty three, and as I was reading your book, Jeff, it was like, okay, facing the blitz is like facing reality. Yeah, and and Jesus Christ, yeah. he was blitzed, wasn't he? And w- well, if you, if you look at it, Dustin, all of history um, is a story of a brutal blitz where Satan rebelled out of pride, and in his rebellion created the destruction of the perfect life that God intended for us, because Adam and Eve followed that same pattern and listened to his deception, and then came the the blitz upon humanity of the curse and the fall, and so now we have all this imperfect stuff, some of which, you know, I I didn't cause some of this. The the origin of this is Satan. Um, But then Jesus Christ came in God's rescue mission to turn the blitz from bad to good. And the the very strategy that God used for Jesus to reconcile the world to himself, to wipe out our sin, to give us that eternal perfect life with him again, the kingdom that starts now in our heart and someday will be perfected in a new recreated world, Um, the very strategy is Jesus underwent the ultimate blitz of all time. Mm. He comes expecting, the people expecting a conquering hero, and he ends up washing feet and having meals with prostitutes and tax collectors and training 12 guys instead of being famous amongst the millions. And then he, he, he after washing his feet and going to the garden, uh, he says, Father, I'd rather not drink the cup of dying on the cross and bearing the sin of the world and being separated from you and having the wrath of all sin upon myself. But not my will, thy will be done. And then he goes ahead and allows himself to be falsely um, accused, falsely convicted, beaten, scourged, dragged through the streets, nailed to a cross, 
And while he's on the cross bearing our sin, he's actually ministering to his mother and John, saying, your mother and son to each other from now on, and to the, 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 the criminal on his right, uh, who said, truly, you must be the man of God. Could you remember me when you get to heaven? And he says, yes, you'll be in paradise with me today. So Jesus on the cross showed us that blitzes turn for good. His death purchased our life. My guest today is Jeff Kemp, former NFL quarterback, and his book is called Facing the Blitz, Three Strategies for Turning Trials into Triumph. You can learn more about Jeff and his book by visiting FacingTheBlitz.com. And when we return, we're going to talk, how does the blitz relate to purity? What is this, this idea? How can I relate this stuff to what I'm dealing with right now? Well, I tell you, Jeff has this amazing analogy. When we come back, we're going to talk about investor versus consumer relations. You're listening to The Dustin Daniels Show. Do you want to know more about the Bible? If you teach a Bible study and want to be more effective, or you just want to learn for your own personal discipleship, then the Certificate of Bible Teaching Program may be for you. Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary, one of the ten largest seminaries in the world, offers classes in North Phoenix designed to give students greater insight into the content and message of the Bible. Students also learn ways of presenting the Bible more effectively in Bible studies, Sunday school, home groups, or personal discipleship. In North Phoenix, classes meet at I-17 and Cactus Road. Other certificate, diploma, and degree programs are available in North Phoenix and in Scottsdale at the Seminary's Arizona campus, located on Hayden Road. Call today for more information, 480-941-1993. That's area code 480-941-1993. Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary, shaping leaders who expand God's kingdom around the world. Hi, I'm John Eldridge, author of Wild and Heart. You're listening to The Dustin Daniels Show. Well, thank you, John. If you have not heard those interviews from John and his son, Sam Eldridge, check it out on the website, DustinDanielsRadio.com. And by the way, this is a radio outreach ministry of seven places, and we are on the air because of your financial support. Thank you to all of our Purity partners who donate $1 per day, $30 per month, And if you are interested in doing that, if this radio program has helped you, uh, we would ask that you please help us. You can visit DustinDanielsRadio.com, click on the Donate button. You can also text 7 places to 77977. Well, my guest today is Jeff Kemp. He's the former NFL quarterback, and he's written a book. It's called Facing the Blitz, Three Strategies for Turning Trials into Triumph. And you can learn more about Jeff and his book at FacingTheBlitz.com. Jeff, before the break, we were talking about this idea of relationships and this idea of purity. And you, you mentioned in your book, investor versus consumer relationships. And when you look at that through the lens of purity, can you give us some thoughts? Yeah, I can. Um, let, me, let me do a recap real quick of what Facing the Blitz strategies are all about. Um, there's three strategies for facing life's problems to turn them into positives. One is take a long-term view. Two is be willing to change and mature and be different. Let God conform you to the image of Christ. Get more humble, more other-centered. Uh, learn to listen. Okay? Um, stop using something that's destroying you. Stop using people and loving money. Start loving people and using money. So be willing to change. And then number three is um, learn to bless other people. Don't focus on yourself. Focus on blessing other people. So that third strategy is, is not easy to do unless you have a team approach to life and you're willing to be an investor, not a consumer. And that's what we're talking about here. Um, that relationships in America and this modern era of advertising and consumption have kind of fallen into the pattern of consumer because we're trained and told that we're consumers. Everything's about us. Everything should make us happy. Uh, we should trade in this car, get a new one, lease that one, buy, buy an iPhone 6, get a 6 Plus, get a 7, get the next thing. Don't be satisfied with what you have. Um, and that creates a, a, a self-centered selfishness that drains the value from relationships and is always taking and not giving. 
some people call them 50-50 relationships. We're all put in 50, you put in 50. But we're all we all we're always a bad measure of distance when we're talking about meeting you halfway. Um, <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> so well, pretty soon the, the relationship is drained of the goodwill, the generosity, the kindness, the forgiveness, um, the humility, and the other centeredness. And that's what makes marriages break up. That's why dating relationships fall apart. That's why cohabiting relationships have a, a much less successful rate of success than married relationships. And that's also, though, why many marriages today have broken up and many struggle, because we've let consumerism slip into relationships and marriage. And your, your awareness and expertise with sexual addiction, sexual temptation, uh, pornographic counterfeits, etc., that's a, a perfect example, a tragic example of how we have consumerized sex, God's beautiful, intimate um, gift for human bonding and marriage, for expressing um, oneness, for giving pleasure rather than taking pleasure and having it come back to you as a byproduct, and finally for bearing children and and being fruitful and multiplying. Uh, We've counterfeited that sex. So here's the analogy that helps us understand relationships and combat consumerism and marriage, combat consumerism with sex, combat consumerism and dating. Um, it's, the, it's the analogy between uh, being a consumer and an investor. And I'll explain it to you this way. In pro football, they teach the quarterbacks that their job is to throw the football to a one-foot diameter of accuracy right in front of the receiver, making it easy for the receiver to catch. Don't throw it high so his ribs get blown up or behind him so someone catches him and hits him. Make it perfect so he can succeed. The quarterbacks invest in the wide receiver to make him look good, make it easy. But the wide receivers are told, wherever the ball is, if you can touch it, you must catch it. Jump up, catch it, get your hip ribs hit, miss six games, we'll put another player in for you. Make the quarterback look good, make the team succeed. You serve and invest in the quarterback who's investing in you. And the linemen are investing in everyone by sacrificing themselves and blocking. That investor mentality leads to success. But if everyone acted like a consumer and receivers only wanted perfect passes and receivers and quarterbacks wanted receivers to, to catch anything they throw, all of a sudden no one would have high standards and they wouldn't treat each other well and you'd have no teamwork, no catches, no first downs, no touchdowns, no success, no Super Bowl. Sure. Wow. So now think about your relationship. Are you looking to get from your spouse or to give to your spouse? Do you view sexuality as something that has you have the whole set of dreams and ideas and fantasies that you've collected over the years watching movie, TVs, and pornography, and you're trying to get someone to play that game and make you happy to fill your stimulated uh, uh, life? That's a consumer in sex. Or are you thinking, I want to demonstrate my lifelong loyalty, and I want to please this other person, and I want to find out what, what really makes them happy? And if I'm married, then even in the sexual relationship, I want to be an investor in that other person, not a consumer from them. And most men need to wake up and realize that wives are dying for relational intimacy. They want to know that you choose them again and again after the wedding, not just on that one day or the honeymoon. They want to know that you put them first. They want to know that you're loyal. Uh, they, They want to know that you're interested in them, that you remember things about them. They don't expect you to be perfect, but they do expect you to apologize rather than defend yourself. All those are investor characteristics, to apologize first, to forgive first, to set a date and say, let's date, honey, to say, honey, let's go to a marriage conference and improve our marriage. Um, I'm setting aside some time. I'm going to click off the ESPN and turn and talk to you. That's an investor husband, and that'll create a great marriage, and there'll be many more assets for years to come in that marriage than if we act like consumers. (laughs) My friend has a sign on his mirror that says, would I want to be married to me? And it reminds him every day to flip the switch from selfish little consumer to an unselfish Jesus-like investor in his wife. Yeah, I don't want to be married to me. I don't even like me most of the time, Jeff. You know, it's, <laughs> it's one of those things. So, you, you know, you've played for, for several NFL teams, but you mentioned in your book that marriage is the ultimate team. Can you say more on that? Yeah. Um, my son one time said, Dad, you guys are too different to be married. He was listening to my wife and I having a disagreement because mm. we have outrageously different personalities. And I said, no, 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 Keegan. I got down on my knees. He was five years old. I said, the reason Mommy and Daddy are married is because we are so different. Mm-hmm. Just like linemen and receivers are very – or linemen and running backs are totally different, but they do roles that help each other. And quarterbacks are very different than receivers, but they do things that help each other. Mommy and Daddy are different because God made men and women very different. And he even, even brings people with opposite personalities together so they can make a great team. 
So if you think about the ultimate team, male and female, he created them. In his image, he created them. Male do- doesn't represent all of God's image. Female doesn't represent all of God's image. But together, in unity, in relationship, we do represent his image. And in Ephesians 5.32, it says actually that marriage is an amazing metaphor, a picture. It's a, it's a, it's a mystery that reflects Christ's unconditional agape love for the Church. And really, we ought to be practicing our marriage commitment in the same way that God has demonstrated His love by dying on the cross um, to give His life for us. And that's the loyalty. So the ultimate team on earth is marriage. The ultimate marriage eternally will be the marriage with God in heaven. And the Bible starts in Genesis with a, with a, with a marriage, and it, it ends in Revelation with a, with a wedding banquet. So... Um, the most important picture on earth of God's love is marriage, and we, we Christians need to model it well if we want to attract people to the gospel, and if we want to disciple our kids to love Jesus. We need an honest, authentic, not perfect, reconciling, humble, forgiving, committed, dating, still, still having fun uh, marriage, the ultimate team. A- absolutely. I-, I love that, because when I do some premarital counseling, Jeff, and it's like the the young man in front of me just wants to marry another version of himself and he doesn't realize what you just said is that the there's beauty in being so different you're equal but different yeah, um, equal but different even have even have different roles i mean yeah. the bible tells husbands to uh take responsibility for the relationship die to yourself be the first one to initiate the healing of the relationship that's the jesus type leadership it's not a, a bossy um you know military general um, and wives are meant to be helpers because husbands need so much help, and the Holy Spirit is, is called the helper in the Bible, and the Holy Spirit is equal to Jesus, and it's equal to the Father. So men and women are totally equal, but we have these amazing team roles that God designed, and when we buck against those roles, we end up messing up our relationships. Humility, selflessness, Christ-filled, Holy Spirit-powered loving is what marriage is meant to be about, and it makes all the difference. How important is it when, when you are facing this blitz not to face it alone? You got to have friendships, you got to have community, correct? Oh, you totally do. You know, the, the verse for facing blitzes that, that I am, uh, amplify in the book is Romans 5 3 through 5. It says, We don't just rejoice in our salvation, which is the primary huge thing we, we rejoice in, but it says, We also rejoice in blitzes. We call it tribulation and trial because they bring about. <laughs> perseverance in our relationship to Jesus and character like Jesus and hope in heaven. And more of God's love is poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit when we're going through tough times and we realize God is our ultimate answer. But you know what? To practice those principles is meant to be done in teamwork. God made us to be uh, the body, you know? He, we're the masterpiece, you and me and my wife and me and your, mar- your wife and you. Together, all of us are the masterpiece, not us solo. So you better be humble enough to say, I'm going through a blitz, I need help. I'm stuck with pornography, I need help. I, I, I'm, I'm out of work, and I need to find a job. Can you help me find a job? Uh, my, my kid is off the rails, and I don't know what to do. Can you mentor me in fathering? That's what, those are the linemen of this world. Mm. God has us to be helpers to others and to get help from others. That's the body of Christ. So teamwork is crucial to facing blitzes, and then you actually become a blessing to other people, which is just in your life story. You now are setting people free from that which had you in bondage for 20 years. You didn't just get out of chains. You went on the offensive, and you're breaking others' chains. That's the value of blitzes. My guest today is Jeff Kemp, former NFL quarterback, and we're talking about his book, Facing the Blitz, Three Strategies for Turning Trials into Triumph. Thank you, Jeff. You've been listening to The Dustin Daniel Show. The Dustin Daniels Radio Show is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information with regard to the subject matter covered. This information is given with the understanding that neither the host nor the station is engaged in rendering counseling advice for your personal situation. If you need further help, we encourage you to seek the services of a Christ-based counseling professional. For more information on the radio show, visit DustinDanielsRadio.com.